session four and session five uh, cover probably the most useful tools that you'll be using on a regular basis in these projects. And we're going to look at bulk file and bulk property manipulation here, bulk editing, quick edit. First, a quick overview of what you've seen before as far as document sets are concerned. Remember that if you see a new document button in the report area, that means that you have right access to that particular project or that particular library in that project. The new document button appears also under the files tab, but it isn't labeled the same. It's the upload document button when it's in the files tab. If you click on the top button of the new document section, it's actually a separate button to create a single empty Word document. If you click on the bottom, you have a choice of creating a Word document, a link to someplace else, or a document set. Document sets are like folders, but they're folders with properties. We do not want you using folders. There are backdoor ways of creating folders, and you're going to see an error, a warning about how to create one in this class. If you put files in folders, they're not searchable, they're not indexed, they're not findable unless you know where to find them. We expect CAD files to be put into zip files, but those are the only files we expect to see zipped into a, anything resembling a folder. Otherwise, use document sets. Document sets have naming conventions, just like restrictions, just like the uh, file names do. And document sets are created by clicking on the bottom half of the icon, selecting the document set, giving it a name which is its file name, setting the appropriate properties. And in most cases, the properties you set on the document set are inherited by the files inside the document set. So you don't have to go in and set those later. We have the ability to click and drag, as you've seen earlier. And when the files are downloaded, they automatically acquire the property of the document set. Some things about document sets. They're like folders to bundle files. Unlike folders, properties are inherited. Unlike folders, document sets cannot be nested. And a document set, like a folder, must be created before you load files into it. Remember, it's under the Files tab up there where you don't expect to find things you have to click on above the banner. You click on the bottom half of the new document icon and select the document set. Now, drag and drop. We're going to look at drag and drop a little bit more, but I want to point out some very common mistakes with drag and drop, and that is you're dragging from Windows Explorer into the browser window. When you go and drop it, you've got to drag until you see this blue box with the Drop Here logo. Now you'll see in a little bit that you only have to see a little bit of the blue box in order to drop it in. But the icon, the mouse icon will change, the blue box will appear. A lot of people click on the new document area because it says, or drag files here. If you do that, you'll end up with a single file upload and the Drop Here will not work. If you drop outside the blue box, the first file of the files you selected will be opened inside the browser, if at all possible. So don't click on the new document or drag files here link. And I've said it three or four times. That means that it's a very common mistake. So don't feel bad if you make it. I periodically make it myself, probably once or twice a week. Let's do a quick drag and drop exercise. Some upload gotchas that we need to worry about. You've seen some of these before. Special characters are not allowed in file names. And the reason for that is the ampersand, the pound sign, the percent sign, the question mark are all used 
by the web browser to determine what to do when it's calling up a, up a page. So those special characters are absolutely refused by SharePoint. There are several others that SharePoint will also block. Bulk upload will not handle more than 100 files at a time. It'll give you a very nice message about the fact that it can't handle more than that. And it's a, just a suggestion to move files a batch at a time. Let's go on to bulk file move and quick edit in more detail. This is quick edit following a drag and drop. And we're going to be moving a lot more files and editing the properties of a lot more files. And we're not going to use a document set. In the Human Environment Library, we're going to move these gravestone images. Click in the field or in the area, and then Control A to select all, and then Control Click to unselect the ones we don't want. And then drag it. See the blue box appears, even though you don't see the rest of the box. Now we'll take advantage of the fact that this is a movie and this spinny thing will speed up. Save us a couple of minutes of waiting. Notice that the topic is not set for all these files. We have 37 files and we see 30 in a page at a time. And we're going to go down and see that. We're only seeing the first 30. And these files are grouped by topic. We have to go to the View All View in order for Quick Edit to work. Under the Library tab is the Quick Edit icon. You click on that and notice that the lines between the files are now vertical, not horizontal. This means that we're in edit mode. You click on a cell and it's essentially going to behave like a spreadsheet. We select a value, historic architecture. And now what we can do is we can copy this. So we're going to click away from the box and then click back in. Right click and copy. Click on this cell below it, go down to the bottom, shift click to collect, uh, to select all. A right click, which was at that blue bloom meant, doesn't do anything. Control V does do the paste. And as those things are spinning, they'll eventually stop. And when they stop, the changes have been made. Now that was the first 30 of 37. So we go on to the next page. It automatically puts the blank ones at the top, the blank topics at the top. We select here. Now I'm going to pause this at this point. And this little square here at the bottom of the select box can be clicked and dragged. Now, if this wasn't a movie and we were actually in SharePoint, it would turn into a plus. Those of you who have edited in Excel will recognize that this is a very similar tool to the one in Excel. However, in Excel, if there are numeric values and you click and drag that little box, they automatically increment or decrement depending on which direction you drag the selection box. Here, it will just copy the property and not uh, increment any numeric values, even if there are numeric values in it. So let's go back to pl continue to playing this. That was a control V to paste. Once you're done, all changes are essentially saved, but just to make sure you can click on stop or move somewhere else. If the saving hasn't completed on all the operations, it will say, are you sure you want to do that? If you say yes, it will stop where the current ones are saved and not finish the rest. So that was a quick demo of Quick Edit. Let's review it and then you can try it. Quick Edit is under the Library tab. 
when you click on quick edit, the lines change from horizontal between rows to vertical between the columns. And that means that it's editable. It also says stop instead of new document. If you do not have edit rights, you cannot do this. One word of warning, the from and to DOT libraries, you don't really care about the from DOT library because you don't uh, have the ability to edit that anyway. But uh, when those were created, the quick edit was disabled in that. So you have to create your own view in that library in order to do quick edit. And it has to be a view that does not group by. So any view that is grouped by, if you're in structures, there are a couple of group bys. If you're in utilities, there are a couple of group bys. If you're in project development, there are a couple of group by views. Or in all of them, the view all view is the uh, quick edit able view. Go ahead and try that exercise. And you have to do it in a library where you have contribute access and choose a view that does not group by. Is there an undo? Once those little spinny things stop spinning, you have to edit to change it back. The save has already occurred at that point. The stop button is essentially a courtesy to make sure you don't leave before you're finished, but it cannot roll back anything. Now, there are other ways of rolling things back, but when it comes to properties, you have to go in and manually edit them back. When you hit stop, all it does is change the lines back to horizontal and allow you to uh, load new documents if needed. Click and drag can be done between Windows Explorer and SharePoint. Windows Explorer views of SharePoint. But whenever you click and drag a document set, it will automatically convert it to a folder. Please don't do that. You can always move the contents from one document set to another, but don't try to drag a document set to a new SharePoint location. You can always drag it into your workstation and it will automatically be converted to a folder and lose all its uh, properties because as far as your workstation is concerned, it doesn't have any. But do not try to move document sets. This is one way to create folders that just messes things up. Now, let's look more at Windows Explorer views. There are a couple of ways to get at Windows Explorer from the new document up to load from the library tab. And once you get there, there's also a way to make it a favorite so that you don't have to keep redefining it. From the new document upload tab, and we're going to go into a document set so you can see how that's presented. You click on Upload Files using Windows Explorer instead. I've actually seen that sometimes this uh, link no longer exists. But notice you have the official path name within SharePoint. And we can, and this is an R drive folder, Windows Explorer view, drag from Windows Explorer into the SharePoint Windows Explorer view of the SharePoint library. We have found that with large files or large quantities of files, this may fail. This has started as a bug that was introduced in January by Microsoft. Uh, we have found that when you drag from Windows Explorer into SharePoint in the browser, that isn't the case. For some reason, the browser is able to gate the amount of data coming in and it doesn't choke the system, basically. Now, it's a couple of clicks to get there, but uh, that's one of the ways to get the Windows Explorer view. This is the more conventional way, I think. Uh, under the Library tab, you click on Windows Explorer. And this is always the last icon to expand when you don't use full screen.
Now, if you right click on the favorites and add current location to favorites, this becomes a standard folder in your favorites library. Now, if you have 10 projects you're working on, you have 10 two DOT libraries. So that what you need to do is right click on that, rename it so that you know which project you're aiming for. Just as a point of information, with the exception of those three uh, folders in the middle, desktop, downloads, and Dropbox, and DOT no longer lets us use Dropbox, uh, all of these favorites are SharePoint libraries. So I find it much easier to get to some files directly without going into SharePoint. And one of those is the ability to go in and edit and work on PDF files. The browser Acrobat Viewer does not allow you to edit. The browser does not allow you to edit a MicroStation file. And actually, you can have a MicroStation file and edit it in SharePoint as long as it doesn't have any references in it. The only way to get at that would be through this application. I know congestion management does work with uh, congestion models. They can work in this environment. And they're actually, they're the only uh, library where I expect to find uh, subfolders in that environment because the modeler creates some fairly tall model trees or data trees in uh, some of the congestion management tools. You also have the ability to click and drag out of the browser into a SharePoint, I mean a Windows Explorer view. Uh, every browser works a little differently on what you can pick up and drag. Here's an example of a file move, and we're actually using a slightly different uh, web browser and recording tool. So the blue bullseye is actually a left button click. We go to the hydraulics library and open the hydraulics library in Windows Explorer. This is Windows 8, incidentally. Notice that we don't have right access to this library because we are in a reviewer role here in this case. We go to the review comments library where we do have right access. We open up the Windows Explorer view of the hydraulics library and we can click and drag a file that we wish to review into the library we have right access to. And this is a file that we're preparing to review. Let's give this a go. Pay close attention of where you're told to move things. You're actually being asked to move a file onto your workstation. And then from your workstation, move it into the review comments library. And this is a project where you have access, review comments access. What we're going to do now is just introduce you to Acrobat Reader's uh, markup tools in case you haven't seen those, but also in the context of working out of the uh, Windows Explorer view of a SharePoint library. That file we just moved will now edit. And when you open a SharePoint library, sometimes you do have to re-log in. And notice that Acrobat is smart enough to know this is a SharePoint library that has check-in and check-out capabilities. And we haven't covered that in this class. As a matter of fact, that's coming up in the next session. But here's just a little introduction to the tools in Acrobat. This is Acrobat DC playing on Windows 8. And 
you see that even when you say you're starting a new line, it will pick up an existing one. So that is just some of the options that we have available here. You can use any editor you wish. Some of you have Bluebeam, some of you have Acrobat Pro, some of you have Acrobat Reader. Add some text to a file you've just moved. Some upload and editing gotchas. You've seen all these before. You saw them just at the beginning of the presentation. Special character issues, bulk upload and bulk edit. Bulk edit will not edit more than 100 at a time. And instead of those spinny things, what you get is little red dots. And occasionally it will get so confused in trying to do the bulk edit that you end up having to shut down your browser. But generally speaking, if you hit stop uh, and say, yeah, I want to quit, it will allow you to break out. Occasionally, it will actually succeed in a couple of edits before it discovers you've got 100. So you do have to review what you have succeeded in changing and what you haven't. As I said, verbally, click and drag between Windows Explorer views of SharePoint libraries may fail. Dragging between Windows Explorer into the browser tends to work. And just a suggestion, move things in batches and use document sets where it's appropriate. And we have finished this presentation.